The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Standards have come down and down and down, so much so that people don't think, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, that, that's not going to happen, so forth and so on. And they're not applying the supernatural to it. So the church never goes anywhere. See, God asks us, be not conformed, come on, help me with that, to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, let me say this, you might want to write it down. If you're not being transformed, you're being conformed. Got it? Because you, if you're not going forward in the kingdom, there's no such thing as standing still. You can't stand still in the kingdom. If you're not going forward, you're going backwards. You're conforming. And the world is out to conform everybody to its image. But God is out to conform us to the image of his dear son. Jesus was the sample son. The tendency is to think that these miracles are some kind of exception. No, the supernatural is, is natural in the kingdom. Glory to God. It, it is not an exception, it's the rule. And it's a part of your Christianity. Eternity invades the temporal or the earth or time zone of the earth and we call it a miracle. When eternity invades the temporal, we call it a miracle. I'll try that again. See, see, you said, well, wow, that was a miracle. Well, man, all answered prayer is a miracle. See, because when you answer prayer, God has already got the answer to your prayer in heaven. Now, we're not talking about the third heaven where God lives. We're talking about just outside of this three-dimensional world. He's got it loaded. And he's got an unlimited supply. In the earth, you're dealing with a limited supply. I'm dealing with limited solutions. That's why they're still smashing and grabbing. Because if I'm dealing with heaven, heaven may have another solution. Let me give you an example. Heaven may have it so that I can get a solution of a gun that doesn't fire bullets, but it fires a magnetic field that will cause a robber to freeze. But that's not here because the church is asleep. They're busy eating bad food and can't even think anymore. It's not been preached that the church is supposed to access the new solutions, the, the, the things that God has stored because he knew problems were coming and the Bible said the wisdom was laid up for the righteous. And so he's laid it up for us, but if we don't get it, then that particular solution is never in the earth. And if it's never in the earth, now mankind's got problems on top of problems. And the church is saying, oh, isn't that too bad? Too bad. Go get you some good food and go understand how you are a distributor of solutions for the earth for humanity. Oh, does that make sense to you? Now, who can get up there? You don't have to have a Harvard degree. You don't have to have gone to Wharton or you don't have to have gone to MIT. No, all you got to do is be saved. 
And if you get saved and understand that part of your stewardship in this earth is to go and get the solutions, get the products, get the, get the everything that needs in this earth and make a distribution of it. Boy, well, let me tell you, you'll be on top of the world. You'll be a billionaire before September the 1st. But it hadn't been taught. Hadn't been taught. So we're going we're gonna to teach it up in here. So he never intended for you and me to live by the limited, by the laws or the limitations of the earth. No. Time was supposed to be your servant, not master. And if you don't know that, you're going to put everything in time. Well, I got to wait on this. I got pay to then come for a weekly. Yes. And so all of that is imprisonment. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Every time you access that supply of the eternity, of the eternal the eternal realm and bring it into the earth. It's a miracle. It's a sign and a wonder. And I'm just saying that it's all kinds of things set out. I mean, look, here's Jezebel. And Jezebel, this is in uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. And what she was going to do is round up all the prophets. And they, they, they went, you know, with her, eating at Jezebel's table. See? And next thing, what she did was, uh, you know, there was a prophet out there, Elijah, and he was operating through God's power. And she had to stop him. Notice she wasn't after the businessman. She was after that prophet. Because if that prophet stay loose, some businessman's going to prosper. And so he had a showdown. And she gathered up all her prophets that were around her. All those that had sold out to the government. Sold out to them. Sold out to them. Sold out. The Bible tells you what to do about innocent life. The Bible tells you about to do about man sleeping with man. The Bible tells you, but these prophets weren't preaching that. They had sold out to the government. Don't get mad at me. You get mad at the word of God if you don't like it. No, they weren't preaching the truth. And so what happened? The people were going, you know, off. And so she was after that prophet. The more she went after that prophet, I'm telling you, he said, let's have a showdown. <laughs> they went up on Mount Carmel or whatever it was and said, hey, okay, now what you do is your God. If he's God, then let's take this altar and have him send fire down. And they start dancing around it and, and thanking God, oh, their God, and whipping themselves with whips and so forth, but no word. Here's what the prophet said, Elijah. He must be on vacation. Are you hear what I'm saying? He said, Jesus said, if I do not the works of my father, you have a right to walk up out of here and don't believe a thing that I say. He meant for every leader to demonstrate God's power. Say amen. So what happened? They danced around there to evening. Nothing happened. Then Elijah said, I'll take over. He said, bring some water and wet this thing. Because I don't think, I don't want them to think something just happened to happen. A spark came up from somewhere. 
He said, bring the water again and douse it again. Bring it again and douse it again. And then he began to cry out to his God. Thou art God in heaven. Show these people that I've done this according to your name. And then the fire fell. Burned up the altar. Do you hear what I'm telling you? The world, Satan knows miracles give you mastery. I'm here to tell you, when Jesus was short on tax money, what did he do? He went fishing. He got a miracle, didn't he? I'm just saying with you, you short on some money. Come on now. But if you were miracle minded, you can fix that shortness. Now, if you're not miracle minded, you might reject that. But all you got to do is go in that Bible and look at 2 Kings chapter 7 and you look and see what happened in that. And you look and see how the man prophesied tomorrow about this time. I said tomorrow about this same time. See, we need to stop giving it because you can't see time and get a miracle. See, the, the thing that you can't do, don't be lured into giving your problem time. Don't give it time. Because if you give it time, you're dropping down in the earth. You got to stay up there in heaven. You got to give it no time. Now, see, get, get, come on, you got to have some crazy faith. You, you take your faith and tell time what to do. You know it won't be here for two weeks, but this is what you say. Tomorrow, about this same time. Come on, come on, come on, buddy. Now God starts working. Angels start working. Holy Ghost starts working. Anointing starts working. You just, you... I was talking to one of our members yesterday and he said, I'm a member of the Mod Squad. I said, Mod Squad? He said, yeah, miracles on demand. Glory to God. Go ahead, brother. Go, you catching that thing now. That's where you going. You are going to miracles on demand in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Now you think about the situations that are happening out there right now. The world is waiting for miracles. This woman, I think she caught something. She went to the prophet and said, hey, my husband feared the Lord. He was taking care of prophets and now he's dead. That's the devil that killed him. But he's saying now, she said, uh, now what are you going to do about it? And they're coming to take my two sons to put them in slavery, to make them pay off the debt. He said, what do you got in your house? She said, I don't have anything in the house but a little oil. He said, all right, go and borrow some vessels. Don't borrow a few. These are big vessels. And when you come in, bring your sons in and shut the door. And then begin to pour it out. And she just obeyed God because miracles take obedience. And when she obeyed God, the Bible says that she then filled up the vessels that asked her son, give me another vessel. They said, there's not another one. She filled up all that oil. That was expensive oil. Now he, she came back to the man of God and said, now what do I do now? See, she, she didn't know what to do. Lord have mercy. My point to you is, is God in working a miracle may give you the first step to the miracle. He may give you a miracle before the other miracle. Lord have mercy. Boy, you got to see this. 
See, she didn't have to go out and sell the oil. He said, go sell the oil. She didn't have to go out peddling oil, oil, oil. No, 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 no. People just came saying, hey, I heard you had some oil. I heard you kind of like gas cards today. I heard you had some gas cards. I heard, are you following what I'm saying? But that miracle got her out of that situation. Watch it. And then she didn't need one in two weeks. She needed one right now. There's somebody in here that need a miracle right now. I'm saying think miracles. You're not waiting on something to happen. It's already happened. It's right up here in the heavens or in eternity. It's waiting for you to requisition it. Fill out a requisition card. Lord, I want this and I want it by this time. I want, that's the way my wife did with that job. She said, I want the job. I want it in computers. I want it 10 minutes from now. I want this kind of salary. I want this. Now on the salary piece, she had a number down there, but they gave her 5,000, I think more than they, 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 that she had on the thing. And the reason why they did that is because when she wasn't looking, I did this. 5,000 more. In Jesus' name. Somebody over there think I'm crazy. Yeah, praise God. Praise your faith. Dauntless faith. Faith that'll change the world. That's what I feel in here. Faith is coming alive. Glory to God. It's coming alive. Y'all got me preaching hard here. But I tell you this right here. Somebody in here is catching this thing. Come on, you got to think like God, man. You stop thinking you broke. That's not God. You're one of the riches in the universe. You stop thinking you sick. That's not God. By his stripes, you were. You stop thinking you're going to lose because God says he always causes you to triumph. Somebody's kidding on fire for the word of God.
limitless faith. Yeah. That faith that'll get up on the rooftop yeah. because you can't get in by the front door because yeah. there's too many preachers blocking the door. Yeah. But you get up on the rooftop and you tear the roof open and tell your sick friend, I'm going to throw him down there in front of Jesus. Say amen. Yeah. I got a feeling that the church is about to come alive. You about to see miracles that have never been seen on the face of this green earth. We're about to bring heaven to earth in the name of Jesus. I'm saying from this day, you will never be the same. The world needs miracles. And you are the miracle worker. God has ordained you for this hour. You were not meant to be back in 1492 or when Jesus walked the earth. Remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you.